Good morning. I'm here today to talk about this wonderful design, which of course I recreated. I didn't design it, I interpreted something from the late 17th century. And the lion in this piece represents King Charles II and his restoration to the throne. So I've called it the restoration pillow. Like its sister design, the Jacobean hunt, it's a tree of life design in an idyllic scene with hammocks along the base and it's actually a miniature version of the larger bed hangings that you would normally see. So the three pillows I bought from an auction houses actually are very, very rare. And I'd love to know um, if there are three more because these were purposed as seat covers with a curved top um, originally, I think. And then when I bought them, they'd been pillows for quite a long time. Now I took them inside of the uh, pillow fluff out, which was dirty and disgusting and turned the pillow inside out and looked at the back to find these wonderful colors. So um, if I show you these colors, which I find very exciting, just uh, the faint um, slaty blue through to the deeper indigo blue, yellows to the slate blue, greens to blue, pinks to yellows, fantastic butterfly in contrast, no shading, just very, very precise stitching on this area. The lion represents the restoration, but the face is probably Charles I or Charles II, but this long nose is typical of that family. The design includes um, a tulip, and is it a tulip, or is it an orchid, or is it a fritillaria? I don't know, but um, perhaps it's a crocus. And whatever it is, it will have delivered a message to the people who saw it. So in the 17th century, the symbolism would be different from the 16th century, different from the 20th century, but these symbols are incredibly powerful. So the butterfly or moth often represents the monarch and the um, rise of the monarch from a sleeping dormant state. So the restoration with the butterfly or the moth is actually very, very apt. Um, this little bird at the top, perhaps telling a message, the grapes and the vines and the fruits and the strawberries on the base, all just talking about um, food. And I particularly like the huge dominant flower in the middle and working that up in layers of stitches is really quite a pleasure. And using satin stitch over and over again to create these grapes, is, it just gives it a 3D quality. Now in the kit itself, You get many colours, and these are very similar from the Jacobean Hunt because, of course, they're from the same set. And these are the colours, and this is why I'm wearing this colour top. Actually, I think I'm starting to wear my kit colours, which is a little worrying. Um, so this fantastic number of walls. I mean, it's, it's extravagant really to get this much in a kit and you won't use up the whole of every thread, clearly you won't, but you won't run out either. But you could buy a printed linen or some plain linen and draw out a design and recreate it or you could um, make something smaller or larger or you could use the wools to make cord edging. I wouldn't personally <laughs> be bothered to make tassels but maybe that's your thing. <laughs> you could always do that. It's quite easy to do. Anyway, you get the uh, needles inside and of course um, the kit instructions. Uh, you get the essential guide which is all about how to thread the needle and the real basics of crawl work. And if you bought one of our kits before, then really you might want to give that to somebody who hasn't done it before and it's very postable. So do pass it on if you've got one of these already. And that is all about threading the needle, blocking and a very simple, um, a very simple guide. The stitch chart is always separate. And in this case, because we always have our stitch charts in scale to the design, it's two separate a3 sheets. So there you see the lovely lion and here he is printed onto the linen. And as you see, the first layer of the shading is always drawn on for you. So really you're painting by numbers. You're going over those petals 
um, with a double thread and uh, I have a secret way of making them even better. So by going over with a single thread after you've worked a double thread. So all that's in the, um, in the guide. The great thing about crew work is that if it looks awful, you just keep stitching and you use the awful bit for padding and you get masses and masses of wools to encourage you to do that. So we always start with an easy area and carry on and it gets more challenging as you go forward. Although I wouldn't say anything is particularly difficult. It's just, there's just a lot of it. Um, and it certainly kept me quiet for a while and I never ever thought this would be a kit. There's the lion's face. And um, I mean, even the lion's face gets 12 drawings. So well done, Georgie, for painting all of those. And the butterfly in the end, even his little wings have lots of mention. So I hope you will enjoy stitching this design or one of my other designs. I design for fun. I don't design because I'm thinking about a kit to sell. And I'm so thrilled that now my designs are really reaching so many more people thanks to the internet and all these videos. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>